Scarlet Harvest is a retro sci-fi horror shooter I'm developing in Easy FPS Editor. It's my first project in this engine, and my first project not using an engine developed by the game creators. And in this series of videos, I want to break down what I've learned so far, and hopefully encourage you to give this promising engine a shot. So first of all, why Easy FPS Editor? It's no secret that I'm bad at finishing game dev projects. Over the years I've showcased several on this channel, and none have ever gone beyond short demos, despite years of work. Some might say that's because I use engines by the game creators, but I'm not so sure. I put 10 hours into a Udemy course on Unreal, and the whole process was just so daunting that I really struggled to get into it. Instead, I started looking at simpler engines, even if they were a little restrictive. Enter Easy FPS Editor, a small lightweight engine for making 2.5D shooters like Doom or Wolfenstein 3D. Creating weapons, enemies, walls, floors and decorations is as simple as importing a few PNG files and tweaking some values in the editor. And over the past couple of years, I've watched several of my fellow Game Guru alumni develop projects in it. And yet, for the longest time, I wasn't interested in using it. I've got nothing against 2.5D shooters, but I'm just not nostalgic for them in the same way some people are. I think it's because my first gaming experiences were games like Quake 2, Tomb Raider and Carmageddon. Very retro, but very much from the era of early 3D polygonal graphics, not 2.5D flat sprites. I've also got no experience making pixel art, which those 2.5D games relied on. But then I played Vanir, an atmospheric fantasy game by former Game Guru Max user Pixel Wolf. It's made in Easy FPS Editor, but features fully 3D characters, weapons, and decorations. I had no idea EFPSE supported 3D models, but when I found out it did, I knew I had to give it a go. At the same time, DK Productions announced his ninth game jam. I've entered previous ones with my deliberately awful Valley of the Dead and my half-baked spy game, No Sequel For You, both made in Game Guru Classic. The Game Jam gave me the perfect opportunity to try out Easy FPS Editor and make something small. I wrote a basic plot and started sketching ideas. It was to be a retro sci-fi shooter about aliens invading Earth to harvest humans. Think The War of the Worlds, but with a slightly 80s synthwave aesthetic. For the art style and presentation, I drew on my earliest gaming memories for inspiration, nodding at everything from shooters like Quake 2 to point-and-click adventure games like Titanic Adventure Out of Time. I'll cover the weapons, enemies and characters in more detail in my next video, but for now, let's talk about what it's like to actually use Easy FPS Editor. Blocking out a level in EFPSE couldn't be simpler. You import a texture as either a wall or a floor and start painting on a grid system, similar to FPS Creator. Doors and raised platforms can be added using modifiers that come with the engine, although you need to make a special texture for doors. You can also use cube maps if you want a different texture on each side of a given block. This ended up being really helpful when I needed to transition between one area and another with a different design, like in the stairwell. Speaking of stairs, you can also make your own custom modifiers in the editor. Very quickly I was making windows and low walls, and within a few minutes I'd built my first few rooms. But sometimes making custom modifiers is a bit of a headache. Slopes don't seem to work at all well, and at one point I spent two days working out how to make a flight of stairs with a realistic incline, even resorting to plotting it out on a spreadsheet. The theme of the game contest was gore, so I decided to set my opening levels in a hospital. I'd previously made a hospital environment once in Game Guru, so I already had textures and models ready to go. I wanted the ambience to harken back to Fear, a slightly more recent game I'll admit, but still a classic. Lighting would therefore be critical. Unfortunately, EFPSE's lighting engine is basic to say the least, and it's very easy to get unwanted results. It takes a lot of trial and error to get it right. It also took lots of trial and error to design certain spaces where I wanted to deliver information to the player. I remodeled this room several times to make it clear where the player should be aiming for and give them a clear objective. If you're enjoying this video so far, give this video a like, 
or subscribe so you don't miss my next video. I knew I'd also need lots of other decorations and fixtures to make my level look like a hospital. I don't have any experience making pixel art, so my plan was to source free low poly models from Sketchfab and other outlets and render stills of them in Blender to use as 2D sprites. Searching for low poly assets was problematic, because these days low poly is a subjective term that can mean anything from stylized cartoony assets with no texture to assets that really shouldn't be considered low poly at all. Oh, come on! The look I was going for could perhaps best be described as PSX, i.e. a PlayStation 1 level of fidelity and texture resolution, often relying on photo textures. This art style has become more popular in recent years, but is still quite difficult to find. I ended up using 2D sprites mainly for assets that would have been too high poly to model properly. I would scale them, light them and render them in Blender, and then apply various contrast and posterize effects in Adobe After Effects to degrade them a little, making them more akin to graphics of the late 90s. For maximum control over your assets, sooner or later you'll have to learn about finite state machines. These scripts govern an asset's behavior on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Honestly, I still have no idea how they work, but I was able to cobble one together to control an animated texture I made for a fire element I downloaded. This then revealed another problem. In the editor, you can't place a light and a decoration on the same tile. This initially meant my fire assets, and the orange light they create, had to be offset from one another by one tile. Later, I learned you can place lights via scripts, solving the problem. I'll cover my scripting journey in more detail in a future video. Pretty soon, I realized 2D sprites weren't going to work for every asset, and I'd need to model a few select decorations in 3D. I started with a hospital bed, modeling and UV mapping it in Blender and texturing it in Photoshop. Even though it ended up a little higher poly than I would have liked, a 256 by 256 texture helped make it suitably 90s looking. This isn't exactly a quick or easy way to make assets, but the low polygon budget and only having to make one texture rather than several maps for PBR does save a decent amount of time. Soon I'd made some bench seating, a cupboard, desks, and sourced third-party models of a vending machine and water cooler. EFPSC's support for 3D models is pretty basic. You initially set your assets up as a 2D sprite, then use the model configurator panel to specify a 3D model the engine should swap in instead of a flat plane. Your texture must also be named exactly the same as your 3D model. In the build I was using, EFPSC only supports one model format, MD3, as used in the Quake 3 engine. The community recommends using a program called Neosys to convert your 3D models to MD3. But I already own Milkshape, which can also export MD3 models, so I just use that. EFPSC currently has no controls in the editor to rotate or offset 3D models. To get models to face different directions, I had to export four different versions of each model, each pointing in a different direction, each with their own unique texture names, so that I could use whichever version was most appropriate. I've since learned it's possible to rotate and place 3D models via scripts, which sounds much more efficient, but I haven't tried this yet. As my confidence grew, I was eventually modeling full scenery pieces that slotted right into the level, such as the holes in the floor in levels 2 and 3. I ended up modeling a lot more than I originally planned, and you could argue this is that same floor returning again, me getting sidetracked making models instead of finishing the game. But by working at a lower poly count and only needing to make one texture per model, I found it much faster, and that meant I didn't get bogged down making one asset for a whole week, like I would for assets in Game Guru or, dare I say, Unreal Engine. So far, Easy FPS Editor had proved a simple and fun way to make basic 3D environments. It's not really designed to create levels with the same detail or fidelity as Game Guru or FPS Creator, but what it lacks in features, it makes up for in speed. But I knew it was going to take more than just cool looking levels to keep the player engaged. My game needed challenging enemies and weapons that were fun to use. So, in the next video, I'll be breaking down how I made both of these and brought my levels to life. Thanks for watching. Thank you.